Matthew Macklin here with FightHype.com. Matt, can you kind of give us your perspective on the fight coming up against you for, for you and Martinez? Well, from my point of view, it's uh, I'm fighting the best middleweight in the world, but I believe that it should be a unification for it. I thought I beat Felix Stern, pillar to post, last yeah. June in Germany. Stern was, uh, I was a big underdog going into that fight, but I knew I'd win the fight. I didn't get the decision, but I won the fight. Um, you know, I'm an underdog going in here against Martinez, as we're considered. You know, maybe pound for pound best fight in the world. You know, only second only to Manny Pacquiao and uh, and Floyd Mayweather. Um, so yeah, big underdog, but uh, that, that ain't nothing new. And you know hit, what I mean? Yeah. And, uh, so I, I, I don't really read into anything like that. At the end of the day, it's me and him there in the ring. He's a good fighter. He's his strengths. He's his weaknesses. He makes mistakes. He has flaws, just like everyone else. Um, you know, there's departments he's, he has the advantage on me, and there's departments that I have the, the advantage over, over him. So it's up to me to impose my style on him, make him my kind of fight, not make it let not, hit, not let him make it his kind of fight. If I do that, I win the fight. You know, if I let him get in his groove, get in his rhythm, keep it long all night long, and he's going to box me. But if I can get, if I can drag him into where I want to fight, then then it's going to be my kind of fight, and then I'll win that fight. So uh, you know, it's an interesting and intriguing battle of styles, and uh, you know, I think it's going to it's definitely going to cook up into a good fight. Yeah, and obviously you're staying here in New York. Uh, what has been the difference from training here with Buddy McGirt instead of training overseas? Well, I trained with Buddy back in uh, in 2008 when I beat Europe by campus back in Dublin. I done like I think five or six weeks down in Vero Beach with him. Then I went out there for a second camp with him for a fight. After that, um, and the fight fell through the week before due to TV scheduling in the UK. You know, at the time they had a fight a couple of weeks later, so I just didn't bother traveling back. I took a fight. Um, in the UK, and you know, just kind of just built up there. Then and, and had a few few years with Joe Gallagher. You know, he was a good trainer, got me really fit for the fights. And uh, you know, it's um, you know more comforts around you there up here. It's a bit more solitude. But I've said, you know, I've been in New York since September, so I have friends here. But uh, you know, your training camp's training camp. You know, you, you eat, sleep, and you train. You eat, sleep, and you train. It's, it's monotonous and it's mundane. It's lonely, but that's the way it is. You know what I mean? So, uh, but you know, it's keeping the eye on the prize and. You know, I had a target, a tunnel vision, and right. just focusing on March 17th and, 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 and the job that's in hand. Yeah, and we've seen you out in Atlantic City uh, when you saw Darren Barker take on Sergio Martinez. What did you see in that fight? And is there anything that you can take from that fight and use it uh, when you fight against Sergio Martinez? Yeah, look, I did think he was one of Sergio's better performances. I thought, you know, maybe he's slipping a little bit, or, you know, maybe he didn't give Darren Barker the credit he deserved. And, you know, maybe not, I wouldn't say under, underprepared, but, you know, underperformed, maybe due to a lack of motivation or a lack of fear. You know, he wasn't a, he wasn't a, he didn't look at his sharpest. Having said that, credit to Darren Barker, he boxed a smart fight. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I didn't think there was a lot in the fight going into kind of rounds 9, 10, at the halfway stage. I kind of had it even, if not Barker, maybe around ahead. So, you know, he definitely, uh, Sergio's a great fighter, but he's, he's certainly beatable. Mm -hmm. And I actually trained this question, but I want to get it from the fighter's perspective. What do you think other fighters in the past uh, have been doing wrong against Sergio Martinez in order for him to win the fight, or for them and for them to lose the fight against Sergio. Um, well, I think you know they fall for a bit of the, the trickery. Mm -hmm. They let him get in his groove too much, and they, they kind of walk after him. He, that he, he sets traps. He tries to bring them onto shots, and they, they allow him to do that. Um, also, I think some of the guys like in Zurich, Paul Williams. You know, these are six guys, six foot one, six foot two, tall, skinny guys, mm -hmm. head in the air, very upright, easy to tag. You know, I'm only five foot ten, but I'm a big 160 pound fighter. You know, I'm gonna take. I believe what Sergio hits me. I'm gonna take it and come back and hit with mine. You know, I'm gonna see how he likes to get hit by a big 160 pounder. You know, Kelly Pavlik was a big punching 160 pounder, but you know, Pavlik come on 18 pound over the weight on the night of the fight. Now, to me, I just think that you've either dehydrated too much, so. Or you've you've you've, you've overhydrated, overcarved up, and you're sluggish. He didn't. I, I didn't think Pavel looked as sharp as he had done, say, when he was coming through against Taylor and those guys. Um, you know, having said that, take not away. Sergio boxed a beautiful fight, got his rhythm going, and that's the thing. Once he got his rhythm going, he got his movement going. He was sharp. You know, he he, he boxed beautiful. So, uh, you know, you, you look at all the fights and you assess the strengths and weaknesses of all the opponents and common strengths, common weaknesses, and you, and you, you devise a game plan. But you know, at the end of the day, you have game plans, but we have to be able to adapt in the fight as well. So we, you know, we're ready for the fight to go many ways. Yeah. And looking at Sergio Martinez's style, he fights with his hands low. It's no secret. That's just how, yeah. how his style is. Do you think against a fighter like you, that's a mistake? Because it's obvious that he's not going to change that style. Yeah. That's just how he's going to fight. Do you think against you, that's a mistake? Do you think that your pressure 
can probably, uh, you know, change his style up or make him feel uncomfortable? Yeah, I mean, I think the pace can make him feel uncomfortable. But I mean, he fought, he, he's a pretty, he's a pretty, you know, good fighter that stays in good shape. He, fought, he can fight at a pace too. So, you know, I think the thing is with with with, with Sergio, it's, you know, when you do land, you are going to land clean because, like I said, the guard's down. You know, for example, when I fought Felix Stern in Germany, I was landing. It was very hard to penetrate. You know, he was there, st standing right in front of you. It was easy to hit something, but the gloves were always up. You know, with Sergio, he's difficult, he's moving. Mm. When you do land, it, you'll be landing very clean. So, uh, yeah, no, it's, 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 uh, he's a guy that relies on reflexes. And, and last question for me. A lot of American fighters are kind of scared to go overseas and, and risk their records and risk their belts. Are you kind of worried about your fight probably going to the 12th round and leaving it up to the judges' scorecards? Are you kind of worried about how that might sway, or are you confident that you might get the knockout, or you might just put up a, a convincing performance that there's no way they can take the fight from yeah. you? Well, I'm not worried because, um, you know, even going when I went to Germany, which is notorious for bad decisions, I didn't try and I didn't let it play in my mind too much. You know, uh, I was aware of it, but I didn't try, try to not let it bother me. And when, I, when the fight was over, I genuinely and sincerely thought I'd won the fight clearly, beyond any doubt of being robbed, mm -hmm. you know, and I was wrong, and I got robbed, so I was very, you know, I was gutted, you know, I was, I was really disappointed that night, but, you know, I have this fight now with Sergio Martinez, I'm fighting in New York, you know, it's going to be my crowd on St. Mm -hmm. Patrick's Day night at the Garden here in New York, it's not going to be, uh, Sergio's going to feel like the away fighter, mm -hmm. so, you know, I don't, and I think in New York I'll get a fair crack anyway, so I'm not, no, that's not something that concerns me at all. Okay, any last message for your fans out there? Just, you know, Tune into HBO Sky Sports on March 17th. Or get down if you're here in New York, get down to the garden, buy a ticket, watch the fight because uh, it's going to be a hell of a fight. It's going to be a new middleweight champion of the world. Thank you.